Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, and welcome to Fanshawe College's virtual open house. We're in week three of open house for the college. My name is Dan Boyce, and I work in the reputation and brand management department of Fanshawe, and I'm going to be the host for today's session. That doesn't mean a whole lot other than I'm here to talk to you uh, to introduce who your speaker is for today, and that is Allison Stevens, and she is going to present to you uh, about the Advanced Ergonomic Studies Grad Certificate Program. So it's a postgraduate program, presuming that you've got some kind of post-secondary education coming into the program. Before we begin today's session, I'd like to cover a few basic details just to review some housekeeping items here. First of all, as audience members, uh, your webcam and your microphone are turned off automatically for the session. That doesn't mean we don't know you're there. I can see who's there and you certainly have a way to communicate with us. So if you have questions at any point, whether it's throughout the session or afterwards, you can use the question feature to type those. We will save them up and have a live Q&A after the presentation portion of today's session is done. If you'd like to open the questions feature, you're just going to click on the little question mark symbol there. Type your question and we'll hang on to it until Allison's done presenting, and then we'll have a, a question and answer period afterward. Following the session, um, we'll basically do our best to get through everything you've submitted. If there's any reason that timing doesn't allow that, I will give you means to follow up with us. A lot of folks tend to go home and have an aha moment as they're laying in bed later that night and kick themselves that they didn't ask. That's okay. We're going to give you ways to follow up. Just by way of technology, we are streaming live and sometimes that has its issues. If you have multiple programs or apps running on your computer, your tablet, your phone, you may want to think about closing anything you don't need open right now, just so that it doesn't compromise the webinar experience. Uh, don't use up any of your bandwidth unnecessarily. So if you have apps or programs that are running and you don't need them, we'd recommend that you take a minute now just to close them. Um, you can leave your phones on you don't have to silence them because we can't hear you. But I might invite our speaker, Allison, to turn hers on silent if that is relevant at all. Now is the right time for that. And so that's everything I needed to cover before we begin. So once again, just a big thank you. We're really glad to have everybody online who's with us today. Um, and really, really happy that you're part of our open house experience. Um, I'd like to now introduce properly Allison Stevens, who will be speaking about the Advanced Ergonomic Studies graduate certificate program. Go ahead, Allison. Great, thank you, uh, Dan, and thanks everyone for joining in today. Um, I've prepared a few uh, slides for you, a little bit about the program and a little bit about myself. So um, let's see if I can uh, start my slide presentation. Of course, I'm in slide mode and I don't know where it is. Okay, there we go. See, this is what happens when you go virtual. There we go. So I'm hoping with the fact that you've uh, logged in and uh, are interested in the Advanced Ergonomics program that you have some idea of what ergonomics might be. But just to kind of get us all grounded and uh, what might uh, be part of this program should you come uh, to join us, uh, it's really about the scientific discipline concerned with that interaction of the human and with work environment. So that can be from office ergo and everybody has heard about you know how you set up your home office and how you set up desks. But let me tell you that ergonomics is far far bigger than just an office setup. That's just one little aspect of it. So it's really also about machinery, equipment, a lot of uh, ergonomics and my background comes from a manufacturing background, setting up workstations and the safety of, of workers. And then there's this whole other aspect called what we call the human factor or the cognitive demands. And that's setting up these interfaces. You know how we're all dealing with this um, Zooms and going virtual, those interactions with equipment and how we um, uh, can can better utilize them for productivity, efficiency, and things like that. So within that, that means that our course covers many, many aspects, and I'm going to get into details about that. Okay. So I hit the button. There we go. So who am I? Oh, I didn't want to go past that one. That was fast. All right. I got to remember it's a slow one. Let's go back here. One slide. All right. It's going to go back. It's going back one slide. Okay, there we go. 
you can see it. So you'll see on there that um, you have a picture of me and it's really got this Ford Ergo Lab. I have a YouTube video of my lab that I used to run at Ford Motor Company. So I come to the Fanshawe program really excited as really my next step in my career path. So I worked for Ford Motor Company in both Canada and the United States for over 30 years and basically built that ergonomics program. So what happened after that is that the program was expanding, the program at Ford, and uh, I was able to pass it on to ma many of my employees. And this opportunity came along for me to basically start um, this advanced ergonomics graduate program. And I was thrilled and felt that that was the right direction for me. So I'm here to share with you how to become an ergonomist. So for one year, I get you and basically share as much of my knowledge as I possibly can. And the program is really well designed and aligns with certification. So um, I'm going to uh, kind of, you know, highlight some of what I was able to do at Ford and what I'm really excited that I've been able to integrate into the program. So some of the things that um, I was uh, a privilege to use was something called the digital human model. You'll see down in the lower um, right there, you'll see the, um, the digital human model called Jill. Uh, her male counterpart is Jack, very original. And uh, this digital human model allows us to analyze the workers. So you can see here in the picture, the worker was doing some reaches and some inserting some forces. And then um, an ergonomist would be able to go in and then work through uh, what would be acceptable postures to work with, what are acceptable forces. And we basically analyze jobs and analyze the people and then make recommendations to really drive down risk. And so usually the start of an ergonomics program starts with there's a lot of musculoskeletal disorders in the workplace, occupational injuries, and ergonomics is a key aspect of being able to design those workplaces so that we reduce that risk and reduce those, those injuries. So again, I'm gonna put these um, uh, YouTube and my links at the chat at the end uh, so that we don't have to have me over talk um, while I'm talking in the, in the videos. Okay, so we'll do that. But again, I'm excited to share with you some of these really cool technologies that are out in the workplace and really hone in on them for you. So here you have my little Jill. She's doing lots of cool things. Um, and uh, what we are able to do then within the program is utilize the same tools that they're using out on the in the in industry. So we actually have access to the Jack uh, human model. We also have donations that uh, have brought in within the program um, analysis tools like Human Tech and um, Dr. Jim Potvin's Hand Pack. Uh, so we have um, My Abilities with um, some AI. So we really are getting a great reputation with industry that we are graduating uh, leaders in the ergonomic fields. And so with that, they want uh, to make sure that you guys are up to date on the latest technology. So I'm really excited that as part of the program, I can really make uh, this a um, uh, up-to-date technology. And also uh, some of the things that we've really been able to do is work with these industry partners. So get some live client experience and go into industry and go into these industry partners and do some ergonomics hand-on, okay? So one of the other um, projects that I uh, have been able to work with in my career is a is this idea of an a exoskeleton. Um, it's a there's both passive and um, strength augmented, uh, and in this case, the exo is a passive exoskeleton. And what that means is that it's spring loaded, and it actually holds the worker's arms up and gives them extra support. So the idea behind it from a, a kinesiology standpoint is that it reduces the muscle fatigue. And we believe that muscle fatigue is the precursor to injury. So by using such things as the exoskeleton, you can then reduce the risk of uh, muscle fatigue and reduce the risk of, of injuries. So I've been really fortunate in the last years to get some grant proposals and I've purchased um, 
two uh, exoskeletons that we use within the program to understand how they work and you get to, to play with them. Um, we do some uh, experiments within the lab uh, to do that. So that is actually a really good point. Um, the labs are hands-on, so they are a lot about what you're going to see in the in the in a in industry and in a job, and uh, we really do do a lot of hands-on stuff with that. We've also, and I know that I had said this is potentially a, a question, but we are really privileged to be able to do this program as blended. Um, so basically, all of our labs that are hands-on are on campus. We take all our COVID protocol, and um, we are doing a great job. The way I look at it is I feel very passionate that ergonomists are going to be the ones who are going to be telling industries how to set up their workstation. And so you need to understand what does a workstation look like in these pandemic times? So you need to be integral and understand how people can work safely. And so with that, I set up our labs so that you understand how to how we can set those up and how we can do safe protocols to keep everybody safe and safe from an ergonomic standpoint too and COVID, okay? So that's kind of my philosophy on that. So I'm really um, pleased with how uh, we've, we've developed that uh, this year. So we get to play a little bit with exoskeletons. Um, the other part that I always love to say is um, my favorite, I know that the program says a prereq is a uh, kinesiologist, and I am thrilled to say that that is because kinesiologists make the best ergonomists. And here's why. There are a lot of engineers in the world who do fantastic jobs and come up with great solutions to fix fix problems. But what they miss in their education is that understanding of how a human works. So I've got you for one year and I'm gonna hone in your kinesiology skills. You need to understand anatomy, your biomechanics, your physiology, and you're gonna apply that and understand how that fits into this engineering world. So I, you will end up being that consultant to an engineering team. How do you design a workplace so that it has the optimization of how that human works? So that's why um, a, a, this program makes it a prereq to have kin or a, at least a health science and then some of those key courses. So I want you to uh, think about what your plans are. I know you have lots of options. Um, kin grad myself. Uh, you know, there's OT, PT, you know, the, all the, the gamut of what is available to you. But I'm really thrilled that ergonomics is an up and coming field and one that I think is really exciting. So let me talk to you about uh, considering that as an option. This is um, actually a fun, uh, a fun little video exercise that we did in um, a video assignment in one of our classes on professional development, uh, taking fun of the, the bachelor approach. Um, again, it has some voiceover, so I won't play it now, but I will put uh, the link in at the end, and I should just make you have a little smile of choosing why you should choose ergonomics as your uh, career choice, okay? So I'll give you that. So here's the reason that your parents are going to be very excited that you choose a, um, a career in ergonomics. It's because there are jobs, okay? And it has a, a pretty good starting salary, and there's also a very good long-term salary. So right now, our starting salaries are running at about 35000 to 80000 The 80000 is only if you get into like a bigger industry like Ford or GM or Chrysler, which all, by the way, hire ergonomists, and all are really affiliated with the program and love to have, um, to have our graduates. So I believe I have a graduate from every year working in either one of those three automotive uh, companies. So uh, depending on basically what level of entry level job, um, there are opportunities here in the field of ergonomics. So here are a few of the companies that work with me. Um, predominantly these ones have taken a field placement uh, student and then a lot of those have led into um, uh, full-time jobs or contract positions, but again, uh, great support from industry. And I think we're getting that support because there has never been a clear path 
into ergonomics. So when I worked at Ford, I was a hiring manager um, and I would hire ergonomists and um, they would be straight out of a kin program and nothing against that. I love kin, however, they didn't have honed in skills. So um, it was very difficult to get someone who could hit the ground running. So that's my goal and one of the reasons that I'm here in this uh, here at Fanshawe is that I want to make sure that when you get hired in, you know what to do, you know how to help um, a, a company and get up and running without um, having to do those stalls that we had to do uh, when we just had just our basic kid. So we're going to hone those in and get you um, all ready for employment. So as you can see, quite a few here. I have to tell you, it's probably about triple that. So I usually have more field placement than I have students. So I'm limited at 40, I have four. I'm limited at 40 students and we hit our max this year. So, um, but I had over 55 field placements that were co competing uh, for those students. So that I think bodes well for the program, bodes well that, there need, that the needs are still there. Um, even in these COVID times, like I say, that the health and safety uh, is paramount at these times, and an ergonomist is an integral part of a health and safety team. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about the program. I've kind of alluded to that uh, it, it's great if you have a, a kinesiology. It can be a related program, but then just have to show us some of the prereq courses. All that's listed on the, um, on the website. Uh, what I love about the program is all of our courses are aligned with your certification. So when you finish the program, you can apply for an associate ergonomics designation. We've had a 100% success rate uh, of our graduates applying for that. And then um, after four or five years of work experience, uh, you can apply then to become a CCPE, a Canadian college, well, a Canadian certifi certified professional ergonomist, so a CPE. Okay, um, and then that obviously has got um, uh, some credentialing with it and often looked at uh, highly with, um, with employers. So the great thing too is that our faculty are all working and practicing ergonomists. Well, okay, I was working and practicing ergonomists. I got this full-time job now of teaching you. But uh, the rest of the faculty are out there in the world uh, doing ergonomics. So you'll get to meet them and, and they'll be able to bring in uh, their, their stories to you. They all have kin backgrounds. Um, we are based in the southwestern Ontario region and um, uh, they're all certified. The program, it is full-time. Now, I know that some have tried to do a part-time job and that is doable, but I do want you to know is don't have this idea, oh, it's a college program. It's got a lot of work to it, right? Because we have these live client interactions, you're being out in the in industry, collecting data, working in groups, um, there's a lot of work to it. So it is a Monday to Friday. Um, there are some evening classes and the main reason for that is because our part-time faculty are working. So the time that they can come with you are uh, some e um, evening classes. So two 15-week semesters, a fall and a winter, and then we end the, the year with one eight-week field placement. And that's a 300 hours uh, total. This year, we've had to do a little, um, a little, a uh, few minor changes to it, and that is because of um, COVID. So we were able to add in not necessarily on site, but also some remote learning projects. And I have to tell you, it worked way better than I even thought. So I had industries from all over North America. I had a company from Colorado who uh, basically videotaped jobs and met over Zoom with, one, uh, with two of my students and they analyzed jobs remotely and got this company up and running with lots of recommendations and it was an amazing experience. Then we had um, some other remote experiences uh, that allowed us to go to far reaches of, uh, of uh, Canada to, to be able to do things. So I'll probably keep the, some of those remote experiences, like a work from home. We're finding that a lot of the industries that we used to do work with have sent all their uh, employees to a work from home. So we'll work through that. 
all that said, don't let that be your deterrent if you are like, I want to go in a plant and I want to work. Our industrial plants are up and running. And so um, a lot of them had their on-site eight weeks, went went straight. So uh, Martin Rhea does uh, automotive parts. Our Ford plant in Oakville took its son. We also had uh, students go to the GM plant in um, St. Catharines, Oshawa area. Uh, so a lot of the big industrial Toyota, again, in, uh, in plant. So we'll make sure you get what you want. You're in the driver's seat here because I have more placements than I have students. So usually you can um, tell me, we'll have interviews to figure out what is the right fit for you and we'll make sure we get you into a good, uh, a good spot. Okay, what kind of courses can you expect? I gotta keep my eyes ears on time, it's running out. Um, basically, theory and practice, some research stuff. We do some really cool research projects. Safety, just so that you have that is an introductory, and then that human-computer interaction. In the winter, which we're coming into, is professional development. We'll get you aligned with, um, uh, you know, how to interview for ergonomic positions. Instrumentation, we do a lot with noise, lighting, vibration, all the tools that you might come across, and again, another human factors and design uh, course. And then, like I've mentioned, a 300 hour or equivalent to eight weeks of field placement, okay? Um, this is a field placement, it is unpaid. Um, I feel bad about that, but that is the way that uh, the course has been set up, and that is the way that CCPE aligns it, as you need a field placement that has a mentor that is CCPE. So this way we can guarantee that you are getting the exact ergonomics experience that you need for your certification. Um, and um, like I said, we'll work for you a lot. Go back uh, home and we can get something in, in that area. And some are really adventurous. The year, uh, not this year, but last year, I sent someone out to Newfoundland into the iron ore uh, area. And then I sent someone out to Winnipeg's with the Air Force. So again, really we'll find uh, what works for you. And then on a great one to end here before we get into questions, we are finding that industries are loving our graduates. They love what they're seeing and they're actually making jobs that weren't necessarily there before. So I've got about an 86% uh, employment rate, which I think is pretty impressive. That'll definitely impress your parents, okay? So um, I will end it at that. A uh, few minutes over there, but I have a lot to say. Uh, and I'll open it up for questions. Your timing is perfect, Allison. No worries about that at all. And thank you very, very much for providing such uh, insightful information into the program. Appreciate the fact that you went to such uh, lengths there for everybody. Um, and this is the point that I mentioned at the beginning where we move now into a live Q&A. So if you have questions, we will give you answers. If you'd want to ask a question, please submit it using the questions feature. Uh, you'll use your webinar menu there and click on the question mark icon. Go ahead and type your question in, and um, I will relay those now, and I'll answer them, okay? We do have a couple questions in the queue already, so if we run out of time or if we're getting close, I'll let you know. We'll do our best to get through the submitted questions within the next few minutes. Um, if you do have questions afterward, you can also send them by email to myfuture at fanshawc.ca. So M-Y-F-U-T-U-R-E at fanshawc.ca. Fanshaw, if you notice here behind me, has an E at the end of it, and then C for college.ca, and I'm sending that out in the chat for everybody as well. Okay, so the first question I'd like to ask you, Allison, is what is the application to acceptance ratio, or in other words, how competitive is the program? How, how difficult to get into it? All right, that is a great question, and it changes each year, as you can imagine. So, um, this was the first year that we hit max. So my max is 40 um, and we did hit that this year. So I'm excited about that. We've seen continual growth. I expect us to, again, get enough applicants to, um, to be competitive. Uh, all that said, I think you're getting in at a fantastic time. Um, the field is just growing, so it's not, inundated um and so we've had some really good um uh you know 
usually if you've got a kin background and your grades are okay, that is usually good enough to get in, right? Um, like I said, I don't have a lot of experience with grit, uh, with the gritting, but all I can say is your grades will make the at least the first cut um, on that, okay? Perfect, thank you. Um, appreciate the answer on that. I have another question here, um, which is an idea of what we're looking at for tuition costs for next year. So any incoming students who are applying now, you have a ballpark on what they might be paying? I have no idea. Dan, <laughs> do you have any answer for that one? <laughs> the best I can tell you right now is that the fees aren't set for next year. Um, so I, I don't I don't know off the top of my head what they would have been for this year. I think part of that depends on whether you're applying as a domestic or Canadian resident uh, or whether you're applying as an international student. I'm putting a link in the chat to everyone, fanshawseat.ca slash fees. You'll be able to compare what last year's tuition was and it'll give you at least a ballpark. Okay, I am not seeing the chat, Dan. So that's a send to chat. Okay, that's a, I put it out to the audience, Allison. It's maybe okay. Not. Yeah, I just had some other my my um. Can we send them maybe some of the um uh links afterwards? Okay. Yeah, I'll, absolutely. I'll, try, so, I'm, I'll still if I'm looking over here, I'm trying to figure out how to work the chat here, but I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Questions away. You on guys your, go ahead. On your screen, you may see a little toolbar at the right, and one of the lowest um, drop down menus might be chat in gray there. Okay, great. Okay. Yes, Do you have a that. that has come in? And thank you to everyone for sending in your questions. We appreciate this. Um, what's happening as far as sort of the, the COVID adaptations, Allison? So a question about what's, uh, you know, whether classes or labs are going to be online or in person, what's being done in what format? Okay, so as I mentioned, our lectures are actually online, um, a combination of synchronous and asynchronous. I would say that most of my part-time faculty, because they're working, are doing their synchronous, meaning calling in at the time and then going through. Um, me being full-time, I'm doing a nice blend of asynchronous and synchronous. Um, I'm a big fan of Kahoot, so I will tend to post uh, some asynchronous stuff, and then you got to call in on the, the time of the class, and we'll do a review with some of those kind of fun things like a Kahoot. And then if I feel there's exercises or things that are better when it's kind of live, we'll go through that. So I'm really, really passionate to make sure that your experience in a blended format is going to be great, because at the end of the day, the jobs that you're going to get are usually with my network of friends and the companies that I have worked with. So I am going to make sure that you have uh, the highest quality of, of education. And then I do get you on site, uh, on campus for uh, the labs. And like I said, we have force gauges, light meters, um, exoskeletons. So you will get lots of hands-on. We wear our face masks, we clean our equipment, we have the rooms clean before and after, we do our best to uh, keep our social distance, uh, we do COVID screening, just like you would do if you were going into work. So I feel that we are really safe and that we understand the risks. Remember, we've got understand health and safety. We understand physiology. We understand di disease transmission. So we've got to be leaders in the field. And so our labs are um, a great examples of what you're going to do when you get out there working. That's perfect. I think there's time for this one last question that was submitted. Thanks for that answer, by the way. Um, and that is just, I think, going back to the admission kind of process a little bit. Do you know what the average grade cutoff tends to look like? No, because they didn't have one. You're brand new. You're getting in right thing. So we, this was the first year I hit max. There has not been a cutoff. Um, so just work hard, get good grades, and apply, and uh, we'll go from there. So there hasn't been one is the real, the correct answer. Um, and just make sure you get your application in. I believe my cutoff date is February 1st for this uh, program. So good luck. Just work hard. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent point, and I want to just thank everybody for the questions. Um, Allison, thank you very much for taking the time, both for the presentation and for these excellent answers that you're giving. We appreciate it. Um, folks, I know you probably have more questions, or you may think of stuff as the time comes along. Please go into that chat and copy and paste or click on any links you want. Save those things, because once we close, they're gone. 
If you'd like to follow up, it's myfuture at fanshawc.ca. That goes to one of our college recruiting members and they will in turn connect you with the right people to get the answers, depending on the questions that you're looking uh, to find out information about. So we will do our best to redirect you to the right info at every opportunity. Um, when you email Fanshaw, please also just go into your safe senders list and add fanshawc.ca as a safe domain so you don't get us caught in your junk or spam filters or your, your box that uh, deletes items automatically. Um, okay. so thank you to all of our students who submitted questions today. Thanks for coming and attending our open house session. Really appreciate it. Glad to have you here. Allison, thanks for your presentation and for your answers. Um, any more questions at all about the advanced ergonomic studies, I've included the program page on our website, the link in that chat. Please click there. Um, follow up with us at myfuture at, at fanshawc.ca and you can book a one-on-one -on -one appointment if that makes sense as well. And um, if we've got you as a registered attendee rather than a drop-in one, we may follow up with email as well to send you some of the links to these videos and uh, other things. So do watch your email. Thanks for being part of our open house. We appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you as Fanshawe students. Take care, everyone.